Welcome to the first tutorial in this series on Git. So you might be wondering what is Git and is it the same as GitHub and some of these other things you might have heard like Bitbucket or something. Well, Git is the actual technology that you use to manage your source code for your projects. And then places like GitHub and Bitbucket are just places that you go to store your what's called Git repositories. So they, they just allow you to store your code and manage it uh, effectively on one of their servers but Git is the actual name of the technology that you use to do that. So in this video I thought I'd do one of the most common things that people want to do uh, when they're just getting started with Git and GitHub and things like that is that they've heard of GitHub and they want to put some code on there maybe they've written a small project that they want to uh, show to someone else and they want to do that through GitHub but they don't know how to put their repository on GitHub. Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through just creating that in initial Git repository and making sure that you can upload that to GitHub. So I've got a repository at the moment, which I'm not using Git with currently. So I'm going to initialize a new Git repository and then put that on GitHub. So to do that, I'm just going to uh, well, this is my editor, so it's got Git built in, but I'm not really going to use that. I'm just going to use it on the terminal. So if you open a new terminal window and navigate to the folder that you want to store your project in or, or, or are already storing your project in. So in my case, this is a folder called tutorial and in that it's just got a Django project. So you might be familiar with this as if, you're, if you've seen my Django series. But if I do ls-a, so a is going to show all the all the dot files in this uh, folder, and you can see I've got dot git. Uh, so I'm just going to remove that because I said I wasn't using git. So I'm going to do uh, uh, recur remove recursively uh, dot git because git is a folder. So I'm going to remove that, and now you can see this editor's changed color because it's saying okay, there's now no git repository. So to create a new one. In fact, I'm just going to prove that it's not there. So ls-a is going to show there's no git folder now. So if I do git init, that is going to initialize the empty git repository. And now if we look at the editor, it's back up green. Uh, green just means it's all new files and folders. So if it's orange, it will be changed from the previous commit. And uh, if it's gray, it's just not being tracked by git uh, or just being ignored like the .git folder. So, with that said, I'm just going to do git status. So git status, that sh that's one of the commands that you're going to use very frequently with git because it shows you the current status uh, of git. So, <laughs> it makes sense really. So you can see here, there's uh, four different untracked files and, well, these are also folders. So, uh, we've got the sort of top level directories, if you like. And what we want to do is add that so that it's ready to be committed. So you can think of a commit as like uh, your code at a particular point in time. So one of the really cool things about Git is that you never lose any of the code that you've written assuming you've put it in a commit because they're always stored and they're always going to be sort of unique and you're always going to be able to access uh, all the previous states of your Git repository right back to the point where you initialize the Git repository. So it's going to remember all of your code changes, which is why it's so powerful, amongst other things like being able to work with team members more effectively. So I'm going to add all these files so that they're ready to be committed, because red means they're not ready to be committed. So to do that, I'm going to do git add dash a, capital A. And then I'm going to do git status again to show how uh, what I've just done has changed the status of the git repository. And now what you can see is I've just added every single file and this is a fairly large Django project so I do have quite a few files in here and I've just added every single thing. So now once I've done that I want to commit all of these files because remember we've added them but we haven't committed them yet. So I'm going to do git commit dash m and I'm just going to give it a message dash m is the flag for a message and a message is mandatory on a commit so that you know exactly what code was changed during that commit so in this case because we've just created all the code that is in this current project I'm just going to say initial commit because there's no point in describing every single thing that I've done because this commit message would be far too long so I'm going to do that and now it says okay I've created all this stuff 
which is great. So now if we do get status again, you can see there's nothing to commit. So uh, we've committed all the code and now if we look at the editor, it's gone back to being great because there's nothing changed since the last commit. So we can do git log to show that commit and what we want to do now is put it on GitHub. So I'm going to head over to GitHub and I'm going to say, so this is my GitHub page and then in the top left you can click on the little add button and then add new repository and then I'm just going to call it say Django Tutorials because this is the repository that I was using to create that Django tutorial series. So now you can optionally add a description, but you don't have to do that. I'm just going to leave it blank for now. You can sort of fill it in later if you want to. And it's going to be public. And we're just going to leave everything else default. We don't really need to change anything here because we can always create this later if we need to. So I'm going to say create repository. And now what it gives us is it gives us a few options. It says, well, if you haven't created a repository yet, you could do what we've just done and do git init, git add, and then git commit to make your first commit. But what we've, uh, we've already done that. So we need to do, uh, we, need, we just need to push our existing repository to GitHub. So that's gonna use these two commands, but in fact, we're just gonna keep it simple and use S uh, HTTPS. Because if you have an SSH key set up, then you can use this option, but uh, for the purposes of keeping it more simple, I'm just going to use uh, the HTTPS. So I'm just going to copy git remote add origin, and then it's going to uh, give me the URL to that git repository that we just created. So I'm going to paste that in, and so now I can do git remote, and now you can see we've got a remote, so this is saying add a remote called origin, and that is the link to the remote place where we're going to store our source code. And we've called that origin. So doing git remote just shows us all of the remotes that we've got. So now I can do uh, the, next, the next command, which is just simply pushing the code to the git repository. So that's going to take our local uh, source code and it's going to push it to GitHub so that it's uh, on the remote server now. So git push origin master and this saying uh, so it's going to be the remote origin. That's what we called the uh, that's what we call GitHub. We just called it origin and that's sort of a standard practice. And we're going to push to the ma master branch. So hit enter on that. Now it might take a while if you have a large repository but generally it is quite quick unless you have a large amount of static files and really you don't necessarily need to commit them into your repository anyway but that's sort of another topic. So now if I go back to GitHub and I refresh you can see that we've got this uh, project in GitHub now. That's really all you need to do to be able to put code on GitHub and if that was sort of overwhelming or confusing, then maybe watch this video a couple of times because there's a lot of key sort of things that I did here, which if you use Git regularly, you're going to be using a lot. So really everything from Git, git add, Git commit, and Git status uh, really going to be the three that you use, even if you're not working with other people, uh, just to be able to manage your own source code really, really effectively. And Git is such a powerful tool for doing that, and it does a really good job. So that's a brief introduction to Git, and if you have any sort of doubts about how powerful Git can be, just look on the uh, Git website, and you can see all the companies that use it, and they are some really, really big companies. And not only that, you've also got download links, so... I mean, it's pre-installed on Mac, on most Macs, I think, but if you want the latest version, you can download it off this website, or if you have Windows or Linux or something else, then you can download it on this website. And for me, so that just says downloads for Mac, uh, but you can just install it for your respective operating system if you don't already have that installed.